Yeah. One of them asked the question, uh, what was it? It was something like, you know, how long did it take you to kind of get confident with Ableton and, and really know it? And then I sort of said, but I don't know, I'm always still learning stuff about it. I think, you know, there's, there's always things that sometimes you're in Ableton, you're like, I did not know I could do this. Or you're watching, um, you know, a tutorial on, say, Education and Base Site, and I'm like, oh, okay, I've learned something new today. Um, that's going to change up my workflow, or it's a really powerful tool, to be honest, uh, as with many doors. Mm. You know, they can do some really exciting and interesting things, and, you know, the more you're in there, the more you get to know about it all. <laughs> Hey, she ah, is. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, all right. Coffee. Yeah, go and get it. You go and get your coffee. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm good. I kind of wish I was there, though. It looks way more fun than my plain old room here. <laughs> yeah, welcome to my disco shed in my garden. I feel like I need some more sparkles and some more fun things going on. We, we keep trying to put, put fancy dress on Raph. If you think in the chat we need, we need some fancy dress on Raph, then, then let us know. Because uh, we definitely should get him in a hat. We've got plenty. I'm 110% behind this. Silly hats are the way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that knows me, the silly hats at any of the parties I have, they just come out and just suddenly there's people wearing 10 different hats. And yeah, it's the way forward, man. Incredible. So yeah, in, in my, this is our disco shed. And, uh, and in here, we've got uh, just down there, there's a big box of fancy dress. And outside the shed, there's two more boxes of wigs and wigs and inflatables. Uh, during my lockdown, we were—I was literally getting—I was getting drunk on a Friday or Saturday, and then literally ordering another wig or another hat. And on Tuesday mornings, <laughs> the Amazon would deliver, and we were like, "Oh no, what's coming today?" <laughs> Brilliant, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah, welcome to the sheds. So, for those that don't know who you are, can you just give us a little kind of intro to yourself, your origin story, uh, and tell us how you got involved with education and bass? Oh, okay. So, um, I guess. I started with music when I was about 10 um, and I started learning to play piano. Uh, interesting story around that is I did get to a grade eight standard, but my music uh, teacher, the person that taught me piano, said I had to work really hard because I had no natural musical talent. <laughs> so it was one of those where I'm like, yeah, I get that. I kind of just fell in love with music. And I think from there, I'm not one of these people that just picks up an instrument and can just go or is really naturally gifted. It's something that I've kind of had to learn and work through and find my way with. So I guess uh, in a sense, it's it's kind of, I feel like that's an achievement in itself. I'm still here, still doing music so many years down the line. Yeah, then I kind of fell in love with drum and bass when I was about 18 and started partying and enjoying myself. And that was it then. I ran some parties, started doing some vocal work. Um, I was at the time studying music, tech, so kind of all just started to progress from there and got into the production more and then decided, yeah, I'll start this new alias of False Relation um, and kind of go from there, really. Um, where, in terms of education... Everywhere. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I just found out you're from Coventry and I went to university in Coventry and I absolutely, like Coventry was one of my most favourite places in the entire world. Like, because I was there for four years and I absolutely love Coventry and you're from there now. So yeah, where were you raving where, and what years was this? Um, so there used to be a really good night called Gamma, Gamma Funcula that we used to go down to. Um, that was at the Casbah, it's now yep. called. Um, so yeah, that was always good. I kind of wish I'd been around in the days of Eclipse, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, yep. There's people that sort of live around me and in the neighborhood and they talk about it and I'm just like, oh, I just wish I was there. It would have been so good. Um, so yeah, but I, I kind of do a lot of traveling with it. I'm sort of a sun and bass, I love sun and bass and so I did nice. I'll let it roll kind of getting out and about. I've done trips to Berlin on my own and just gone and partied there. It's amazing. I'm thinking about moving there soon, just doing nice. something different. <laughs> yeah, I miss the whole... Well, firstly, I missed the whole Eclipse thing. It was, it was what was it called then when I got there? It's called the, I think it was called The Planet by the time I got there. Yeah, I missed that whole thing. But yeah, that's I know the, the Sun and Bass guys is cool, cool and I love that party. Um, so yeah, that was... So that was you, you went out partying and then you then started making drum and bass. How did that, how did that come about? 
Um, well, I was working as a vocalist on quite a few drum and bass bits, and I'd been running sort of drum and bass events uh, at the SU in Coventry, and then kind of just decided, you know what, I want to sort of take this... I wanted, uh, this sounds really bad now, I wanted a bit more creative control over things, which makes me sound really OCD, I think. But um, yeah, I wanted to kind of, I felt with the vocal work, I wasn't able to output enough mm. um, and not kind of get get things out the way I wanted to um, all of the time. And it's not to say that I still don't do vocal work, but I kind of wanted to just change it up and try something that was more that allowed me more freedom I guess um so yeah it kind of just it, it was a case of I already sort of had some of this knowledge and then I just sort of went from there really and just kept kind of building and got into the production um education and bass have been amazing um uh, they they keep me busy but say at the moment very busy That's um, I mean it's uh one of the ways I met the guys was going down to sort of their conferences and the things that they do. Um, and so it all sort of felt quite natural when they asked me to get on board because, you know, I'd already met them in person. They'd already been really supportive. I was a user of the site myself. And it just kind of, after that, it just, yeah, happened really. And now they're sending me loads of work all the time, um, oh, which that's, is great. Oh, that's sick. So you were using the site and then you went to their things and then, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Networking that, is uh, a really amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Um, how has the last kind of eighteen months been? How's the pandemic been for you? And oh, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? The past, I'd say now things are starting to open up, and I've kind of um, been getting out a bit more, seeing people a bit more. I feel a lot better in myself. I think. Um, mm -hmm education and base I started with their RSL course um and I've been teaching with the January cohort and then the ones that are coming through now so that's been keeping me busy um and I've been working with dynamics and the education and base partnership so dynamics yep. music UK is a project about kind of women in music or female identifying artists and they're really pushing the way for these kind of things so they've recently partnered with education and base um, and had a course that was sponsored by Ableton which I ended up getting the privilege of teaching which was really nice so I taught 20 new um, producers basically their way around Ableton over three weeks um, it was just amazing for me it really kind of gave me the motivation to do to get back into things even more and networking more again and yeah it was a really really positive experience um and also great to see so many females and female identifying artists that are really keen to to kind of um get more and more involved with the music um and interestingly a lot of the people on the course have, have got sort of backgrounds that are kind of artsy or musical and you know they're already halfway there they're just wanting to get into the production side of things which i think can be quite daunting initially are you enjoying this interview if you are consider subscribing to us on youtube and if you want to watch them live come and join us on twitch the link's below twitch.tv forward slash graham farmer we have live interviews a &R sessions demo listening sessions we get labels into uh, signing records come and join us on twitch it's good fun Let's jump back into the interview, though. Let's go. That's amazing. Firstly, that's amazing. Um, so that so so this was with, with Dynamics, and so how did that partnership come about? And and like, I want to know more about this. This is incredible. Yeah, Raf's the man, basically. Um, so yeah, he. Um, I think he started speaking with Dynamics about things, and then sorted out the part uh, the sponsorship with Ableton, and sort of in the background, has been doing a lot of. Um, work on it um but i think he was very keen to obviously make sure that it was taught by a female because you know that was the point of it rather than perhaps one of the the lads at education and base doing it so mm. i i got to uh carry the torch for a bit which was really nice uh, how, how was that how was that was that your first teaching was that how was that i mean i'm a qualified teacher anyway so oh, yeah, i've sick. done a lot okay, of cool. teaching in my past yeah um, and I've got a master's in music tech. I'm thinking about starting my PhD soon, which is exciting. Sick. But 
yeah that's that's kind of i've got ideas um i'm just gonna spend some time researching before i make kind of a decision because i'm like this is a big chunk of my life i'm going to dedicate to this yeah. so i want to make sure i get it right before i sort of jump in the deep end i think with it um but yeah they they've done some really great work and uh, education and based are continuing with their partnership with dynamics and offering even more opportunities um for women in music which is incredible so yeah it's it's really exciting time to be involved with it all that's really cool so it was a three week thing um was it was it you know how did it work tell me about it so I taught them over Zoom. Um, yep. <laughs> there was a few, how, how do we call them? Gremlins, everyone calls them on Zoom. So between Zoom, Ableton and everything else, we managed to uh, sort it all out in the end. But yeah, it was a learning experience for me because I haven't done as much teaching on Zoom. Um, Teams was used in schools quite a bit. So I got kind of my head around that one and then Zoom for teaching rather than just being there kind of watching something. Yeah, something a bit different and new for me. But every day is a learning day. So Love yeah, it. it was it was really good. Um, yeah, 20 people were accepted to the course. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's talk of potentially running it again. I hope so. Um, and yeah, so it was it was really positive to be honest it was just a really positive experience because I feel like now there's a network of people that I wouldn't have necessarily met otherwise um it was great when I was being sent sort of short loops and ideas by people that have only just got into Ableton and I'm like mate this is awesome That's you know incredible. you've got a sick idea coming here keep up with it keep up with it you know keep me updated so it's uh it's a really positive experience for me definitely yeah and I guess I guess for you like from a from a growing up point of view you wouldn't have had any of that and it must have been like it must have been a lot harder for you to kind of break than than with it. and these opportunities are amazing for women for first and foremost. Yeah, definitely. I think one of them asked the question. Uh, what was it? It was something like, you know, how long did it take you to kind of get confident with Ableton and, and really know it? And I think my response was like, if I'd have had this, probably a lot less time than it did, to be <laughs> honest. Um, so yeah, and then I sort of said, but. I don't know, I'm always still learning stuff about it. I think, you know, there's there's always things that sometimes you're in Ableton, you're like, I did not know I could do this. Or you're watching, um, you know, a tutorial on, say, Education and Base Site, and I'm like, oh, okay, I've learned something new today. Um, that's going to change up my workflow. Or it's a really powerful tool, to be honest, uh, as with many doors. You know, they can do some really exciting and interesting things. And, you know, the more you're in there, the more you get to know about it all. Amazing. Um, and you, so you've made us a track breakdown, especially for today. So thank you, firstly, for doing that for us. Um, tell us what's what's the track, because then we'll, we can have a listen to the track in a second. The track is Bootstrap Paradox, which was released by Education and Bass. I want to say it wasn't last Friday, the Friday before. I'm not sure how I say that. And I can't, I'm really rubbish with dates. So I'm going, what day is it today? Um, so it wasn't last Friday, but the Friday before. Then that's probably yeah. around the 6th. Yeah, it was the 6th. That's the one. I should probably know this kind of information. I should have it written down. Do you know, do you, me, the only way, do you know the reason I know that is because I, I literally had COVID and that was my that was my release day from isolation. So that's that's imprinted in my brain that Friday. Well, happy release day to both of us on that <laughs> yeah. day. It's yeah. only different release kind of <laughs> ideas, but yeah, happy release day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sorry to hear you weren't very well though. Um, but it's uh, good that you've made a speedy recovery. Oh, uh, I still know my daughter got it and it was just like she got it and then I knew I was, and, then, and then like it's coming in a couple of days and and we, I was streaming and it was like I was progressively getting worse over those streams and people were like you're gonna have it aren't you and I was like it's coming isn't it like it's on its way and thankfully thankfully I'm out of it on the other side right let's listen to this track right so let's listen to this and then uh, I want to get your five things producers need to know as well because I have a series on YouTube so we're gonna I'll ask you those in a minute as well um, but let's okay. listen to this track. And we'll be back in a minute, crew. Let's listen to it. Let's get going. Right.
in. Wicked. That's amazing. That's so lovely. Hi. Big up. Big up. <laughs> Gang, should we give it a rave horn? Shh. <laughs> and, and definitely, she can definitely have the Hulk smash. Hulk smash! <laughs> oh, lovely. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> Love the Hulk smash. Um, yeah, so we're just talking about this initiative that, you, uh, that you've been running for Women in Music. Sounds amazing, mate. Yeah. Let me just pop the headphones on. Big up. Yeah, it was amazing. It really was. Um, massive props to Frankie. She led it, you know. Um, are you going to run it again? We are definitely going to run it again, yeah. We're just um, having a little breather, um, seeing what the next steps are. And yeah, most certainly running it again. Amazing. So keep an eye on their socials. And by that point, I'll be uh, in my new studio. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Exciting times. So. <laughs> what was your biggest takeaway from that video? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you get out of these videos. I'd love to know which part of the interview you liked or the content you liked. Let me know in the comments below. I'm, I'll be in them with you. I'll be chatting to you in the comments. I'd love to build this community on YouTube. If you're not a subscriber, which I know loads of you aren't, consider subscribing. It's free. You can always unsubscribe anyway. I'd, again, I'd love to build this community on YouTube. If you want to watch these interviews live, we do them on Twitch on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So come and join us on Twitch. Be part of the OGs in the chat. Uh, we have great fun. It's, it's a bit of fun. It's a bit silly. But we also get loads of great content. So come and join us live on Twitch. Again, the link's below. And finally, do you want to join our networking server with other artists, DJs, and producers? We do this on Discord. It's a great platform, Discord. I absolutely love it. Um, it's like the old school forums. I really enjoy it. Come and join us on my Discord server. Again, the link's below. Um, I'd love to see you in there. Say hello. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this interview. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.